Hello everyone, this is Vortex259. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy II. In our previous episode, Firion and his friends found that the Dreadnought destroyed the villages of Poft and Altair. And you'll find that other villages in the region were also attacked by the Dreadnought, such as Paloom and Gatria. So, Firion made his way back to the village of Altair, found that the village was heavily damaged due to the Dreadnought's attack. Fortunately, most of the villagers sought refuge in the rebel hideout. Now, when Firion made his way back to Princess Hilda's throne room, she informed him that the Dreadnought's attack worsened her father's condition. He is now in critical condition and near death, so Minwu left the party to tend to the king's wounds. So, the Dreadnought is a terrible, heavily armed, massive warship that must be stopped. Surely there's a way that Firion and his friends can do that. Now, you might remember in the past we talked to Sid in the village of Poft. He told us that airships are powered by Sunfire. And if you actually go back to Poft and talk to Sid again and ask him the key term Sunfire, he will say controlling Sunfire is a tricky business. Let the flames get too high and you've got a runaway on your hands. The engine will blow sky high. So maybe Sunfire is the key to destroying the Dreadnought. Take what powers it and multiply it and maybe you can blow it up, you reckon? Well, actually, if you ask him the key term Dreadnought, he says what you want to do is blow up that thing's engine. Do that and you can bring the whole overgrown tub down. So, yeah, maybe Sunfire is the key to destroying the Empire's Dreadnought. Uh, so let's uh, see if we can find out more about that Sunfire. Let's just go up here and talk to Hilda again. And Hilda says, my father's condition has improved a great deal thanks to Minwu. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad the king is doing just a little bit better now that Minwu's tending to his wounds. Well, let's go ahead and first of all ask Hilda about the Dreadnought. She says, many lives were taken in the Dreadnought's attack. How are we supposed to fight something so terrible? Well, how about that Sunfire, Hilda? Do you reckon that has anything to do with maybe bringing the Dreadnought down? Let's ask her the key term, Sunfire, see what she says. She says, Sunfire is the crest of the kingdom of Kashuwan. Its flame still burns on the ground floor of Kashuwan Keep. Oh, okay, well, we've heard of Kashuwan in the past. Remember that Scott and Gordon were princes of Kashuwan. Hilda says, Scott and Gordon have told me many stories concerning the flame. The finer points of the tale are not known to me. However, I seem to recall that the flame cannot be passed to just any torch. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. So it is a special flame, it seems. Furion steps up and says, Sid told us that we might be able to use Sunfire to destroy the Dreadnought. And that brings hope to Hilda. She says, then there's no time to waste. You must depart for Kashuwan Keep at once. If you hire Sid's airship, the journey should not take long. That leaves only one question. What can you use to bring the Sunfire back? Well, it seems like you do have an unanswered question. You can't just pick up Sunfire with your hands and it can't be passed to just any torch. It seems we're gonna have to have a special torch maybe to carry that Sunfire around. So before we depart for Kashawan, we better check around and see if we can find more information about that. So uh, let's uh, go down back into the Rebel Hideout and Actually, let's go check on the king and see how he's doing. His majesty's not doing well at all. His condition is much worse after the Dreadnought's attack, and yeah, the guards say the king is not well. So, fortunately, Minwu is here tending to the king. Let's actually just visit with Minwu here. Minwu says the king's illness goes far beyond the physical. There is little I can do. Hmm. Well, at least you're there, Minwu. Let's uh, ask Minwu about the Dreadnought. Minwu says the Dreadnought is a massive airship. It is likely they both function on the same principle, which may be Sunfire, wouldn't you reckon? Well, let's ask Minwu about Sunfire. He says every three years they celebrate a festival of the flame in Kashawan. During the festival, the Sunfire is passed to Ejil's torch while its brazier is cleansed. Hmm. Okay, so we've learned that there is a special torch out there that's called Ejil's torch. We need to see if we can get our hands on that particular torch. And let's go over here and talk to His Majesty, offer comfort to him. And the King of Finn says, so many perished in the Dreadnought's attack. 
Perhaps it would be best if we surrender to the Empire. Oh, come on, don't talk like that, Your Majesty. Seems like you've completely lost your will to live and to go on. No, Therian and his friends will bring the Empire down. Trust us, we can do it. Well, uh, let's uh, see if His Majesty knows anything about Sunfire. Let's just ask him the key term, Sunfire. He says, Scott sealed the gates of Kashawan Keep to protect the Sunfire in the event they were defeated in battle. Oh, okay, well they were defeated in battle, so uh, Scott did seal the gates of Kashawan, it seems. So the Sunfire may rest deep within Kashawan. You will need the Goddess's Bell to break the seal. Aha! So here's another new key term we can learn. So let's learn Goddess's Bell. Apparently that's something we're going to need to break the seal. So let's ask the king about Goddess's Bell. He says the whereabouts of the bell are known only to the Kashuan royal family. So maybe Gordon knows where to find the Goddess's Bell, you think? Well, let's uh, see if we can talk to Minwu here and uh, ask him about the Goddess's Bell. Minwu says Gordon would know where the bell is kept, but I have not seen him lately. How convenient, huh? Gordon's nowhere to be found. Someone close to Scott or Gordon may know where to find it. Well, who do you think that could be? Well, I do know that Hilda was close to Scott. Remember that Scott asked for her hand in marriage, so maybe Hilda would know something about it? So yeah, let's uh, continue to use these key terms to progress the story. Let's go back to Hilda Strong Room and talk to her and ask her about the Goddess's Bell. Hilda says, I've heard Scott and Gordon mention the bell. The gates of Kashawan keep open only to the voice of a Kashawan or the ringing of that bell. The bell rests deep within a cavern on the snow plains. It will not be easy to retrieve. Aha! I smell another fetch quest coming up. So it is your intention to enter the snow cavern? Very well. If only Gordon were here, there would be no need for you to risk such danger. Yeah, very convenient that the cowardly Gordon would run off at a time like this, huh? So we will have to transverse through the snow cavern, it seems. Hilda says, but he isn't, so you must. There is nothing I can do but pray for your success. Joseph knows the snow plains like the back of his hand. You should seek his counsel. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to go back to the village of Salamand and ask Joseph for help getting to the snow cavern. So that's going to be our next quest. So let's just exit Altair here and go out through the uh, rubble base. What I'm actually going to do is go to Salamand and I'll meet you there. Hello again, friends. I've made it back to the village of Salamand. Time to go visit Joseph. So let's just walk up here to Joseph's house in the northeastern corner of town and go visit with the jolly good fellow up here. Here he is, so let's just talk to him. And he pretty much says the same thing that he did last time, so this time let's ask him about the goddess's bill. And he does a double take. He says, the only way to reach the snow cavern is on my snow craft. I keep the snow craft hidden in the mine. There's a blue stone on the first floor that marks the spot. Aha! You remember when we were going back through the Simmet Falls Cave on the first floor? We saw that big blue rock on the first floor, didn't know what it was? Well, apparently that marks Joseph's Snowcraft hiding spot. Look behind the stone and to the right. The secret room's there and the Snowcraft is inside. I'm sorry I couldn't help you find the Mithril. So I want to make up for that by pitching in now. What are we waiting for? Let's go. So we get a new member join our party. We get Joseph joining our party. So it looks like we're going to have to make our way back down through uh, the Senate Falls Cavern, at least through the first floor, to get Joseph's Snowcraft. So I'm going to make my way back down to Senate Falls, and I'll see you on the first floor there. Okay, I've made my way back to Senate Falls, so let's go inside here to the first floor and make our way back to that blue stone, which is just right up ahead here. Aha, here it is. Well, I'm pushing the 
Well, I was rudely interrupted by some Sasquatch there, so I had to mess with them a little bit. Anyway, what I started to say was, uh, I'm pressing the button, don't see anything happening here when facing the blue stone. However, when you come up to the upper right portion of this screen, Joseph will exit out of the party and open up a hidden door. Joseph turns a small rock jutting out of the wall and a passage appears. Thank you, Joseph. He says the snow craft is in here. So let's just go to the right here, press right on the keypad, and we find a hidden room. And if we zoom over here to the right, we find a treasure chest, and inside we will obtain the snow craft. So now we can access the snow cavern with that, and we will do that in our next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy II. This has been Vortex259. Thank you for watching today's video. Hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. We'll see you again next time.